What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. I gotta say, out of all the stuff that has come to the game over the last year or so, my favorite thing is just the Dragon's Nest. It's just cool as hell. It looks good, it's effective on most maps, and just a lot of fun to use. Now, the Countess herself is quite the beast. Uh, however, I don't have a Countess all fine-tuned quite yet. Uh, however, I've just been having a ton of fun using the Dragon's Nest on just about every map. So here we are in Chaos 9, the Wildest West, and we're going to give the Dragons a test on this one. For the Dragon's Nest, I'm using Destruction, Mass Destruction, and then Dragon's Haste with Anti-Melee, Anti-Chaos, and Defense Raid. Uh, we're also going to throw in some boost auras with destruction, boosted power, and mass destruction. Uh, I don't have these fully set up for DPS yet. I still use them as crowd control. So I do have defense range on there, which is not helping out in this particular situation. Now, not positive, but we might throw a buff beam in the mix as well, uh, depending on how the DU works out. We do have 1250 DU and essentially just three areas to build. So that's going to leave us, what, 400 in each area with 50 left over. Uh, let's go ahead and just build it out and see what we can do here. So let's start off with uh, some Dragon's Nest right here in the middle. That's 150. Let's go ahead and get our uh, boost star down. We'll throw down a destructive pylon as well. I'm going to just use a lightning strike arm for it. Uh, just basically using it for destructive pylon. You see I've got a, a super old onslaught relic on it. So uh, just using it to hold the stuff. Now that's 260. So we could actually go three more dragons, not use a buff beam. And we would fit the DU here. So yeah, that's 410. Uh, we're going to have, what, 20 DU left over if we do this in every area. Now since I'm not going with any range on the dragon's nest, I do want to start the dragons out here a little ways. We want to build them out here far enough. Let's start getting the job done right out front. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll slap one right in the middle. And then we'll go with two on the outsides. We'll go another right there. Get our booster and our destructive pylon in. And then we'll go with three more. So I do like to fully jack these up with a buff beam and get the full power going on them. However... I think we're going to be able to clear this map without any problems without doing that. Uh, once again, on this side, I do want to come out here a little ways, make sure that we're getting uh, hitting the side spawns here and giving the dragons plenty of time to do their work. So let's go with that uh, familiar pattern once again. Uh, we'll throw that boost star down, the uh, lightning strike, and then three more dragons. Now, like I said, we're going to have a little change left over. I'm just going to kind of forget it exists. And um, let's just get on with it. Now we do have 220 DU left, or 20, 220 mana left over. Let's just uh, slap that on those guys, and uh, let's just let it fly here. Now I do want to kind of see how effective these dragons are going to get the job done. I will contribute uh, to bosses or anywhere we need to be. Uh, however, I just kind of want to watch what the dragons are doing. Um, on the side lanes, they're getting right up into the spawn. Um, of course, we don't have any spiders, so we're able to get those out there a little ways. Uh, we do have a... Uh, we had a wyvern push in pretty close there, but as soon as the dragon switched to it, it was just GG. So, taking a look at the mini-map, everything's getting burned quite quickly. Now, uh, we're going to have to see how these side lanes do. Yeah, they're still getting it. I think with some upgrades in um, this could just quite potentially completely steamroll the map. Uh, no doubt about it. How are we doing over here? We're doing pretty good over here as well. The dragons are getting out there. We actually have a lot of dragons sitting. So that's one indicator that uh, if you use too many dragons nests, then you're going to have lots of dragons sitting around. So this tells me that I probably could have went maybe one less dragon on each area and thrown in a buff beam instead and gotten the power out of there. So uh, all the sitting dragons that are not doing anything is just, it's just a dead indicator. Now when the lane fills up, let's see, most of them are out. 
Yeah, they're all out there, so I guess maybe not. Maybe we're fine. It could have been just that one. We'll have to see how it goes as the waves progress here. But, um, yeah, too many sitting dragons is just ineffectiveness, so you want to make sure to tweak your builds accordingly. No doubt about it. Side lanes are all getting smoked. A little Skelly's getting uh, the old barbecue here. Part of it, too, is the way the lanes are, or the the lane schedules, I should say, are kind of staggered. That, um, you know, that gives the dragons time to get caught up, and no one area gets really overwhelmed. It's going to be all about those dive bombers, I think. If the kobolds don't get destroyed, of course, you know, we could have unhappy times, so... This may, this entire run may just boil down to flyers. Let's throw uh, just some rando upgrades around. Let's see, we got 200 left. Let's drop a few over here and then just let it fly here. Now, of course, this map drops uh, or has the potential to drop those pets. But additionally, the uh, the chest mod, which is really a pretty good chest mod on just about any hero. So a little survivability goes a long, long way. And that is a kind of a powerful level of survivability when you're talking about just adding one mod on one item. Uh, so that definitely does a great job, the old snake skin. See how we do against the bosses once they come. I think it's going to be a steamroll, to be completely honest. Let's see. We've got a ogre. About half. 492 million. I think he's going to just get smoked. I'm just going to let him come around. I'm not going to do any damage to him. I want to see if the dragons are capable of burning them out while there's a big pack of enemies there. I think that's the key. Now, one of the things that the dragons have going for them is they're shooting those little fireballs, you know. Oh, yeah, the ogre's got big chunks taken out. Is he going to uh, get destroyed? Yeah, he's getting burned up. Let's see, yeah, no problems there. We are uh, GG's to the ogres. Now, another thought is, instead of going seven, what about only going five dragon's nests? That would give us the opportunity to throw in... A buff beam on every lane, but additionally maybe a petrify combo and get like two proton beams going out here. I think that could be a uh, quite viable source as well. Now, you know, obviously the wyverns have got that resistance and are going to be passing that resistance along to crowd control. But as soon as they die, any of the additional mobs that are out, uh, you can CC them all day. So a little crowd control never hurts, that's for sure. Something like Frosty Power wouldn't really be effective in the setup because the enemies would have to get right here on top of the Dragon's Nest to get any effectiveness out of it. But I do think a buff beam added in would be quite nice, no doubt. Uh, the additional power on even just the buff beam with no CC, the additional power on six Dragon's Nest would go a long, long way versus just having that seventh there. And let's see, let's just uh, spam it around once again. And now I don't think upgrades are as crucial. I think, well, to be honest with you, they may not have been as crucial the entire run. But let's uh, let's just put put the mana in where we can. The wyverns are making it down, but they're getting busted up. As soon as they even get even remotely close to those dragon's nests, they are just getting crushed. No doubt about it there. Now, of course, for the boss wave here, we will have all of those hero bosses. Which the dragons are going to wreck them, but of course they all hit quite hard, so... I may get wrecked if I get out there and get uh, too uppity. Um, I'm thinking the Dragon's Nests are a great way to farm this map. They're just doing really good. So let me just go ahead and jump in and contribute a little bit. Uh, not trying to do an AFK run here. Just wanted to see how effective those Dragon's Nests are. 
But, of course, the more you contribute, the faster it's all going to run. So, let me just get out here and uh, get a little bit uppity on some of these bads. And uh, we got a Siege Roller coming down, too. The Siege Roller took a lot of damage from him. But, of course, it's got a long way to roll. It's way, way up and around. So, let's just go ahead and get that Siege Roller attended to here. Get the Wyvern out of the way. And there we go. Siege Roller down. Lots of little skellies on this one. There is no doubt about it there. That frost fire, of course, its real uh, huge, massive benefit is just clearing out those packs of enemies. The more enemies together, the more powerful it is. So, very nice to take advantage of that as well. Getting to the kobolds too. Really, I think I do still think that could. Be the only potential problem on the map here is the flyers. Uh, now the dragons are going to wreck them, and they do come at the end of the lane, so they shouldn't be distracted very much by anything that's rolling out. So they should do well against them. I just think with these dragons, it captures a lot of kind of the love we all had for the hornet's nest. Adds in a pretty cool graphic design. Uh, using that little Betsy character model. I just I just really feel like the, the dragons are just a pretty awesome addition, really. They've got one important thing, and that is they're fun to use. And, you know, I mean, it is a game and all, so we might as well have a little fun while we're playing it. Mr. Cannon Ogre rolling on out. Oop, I missed. <laughs> he didn't. Aimbot Cannon Ogre. Confirmed. I wasn't quite close enough to him when I started winding the nuke up. We'll get him with the jump shot there. Now I think it's just a waiting game to the end. Even with that big pack of assassins, still just kind of ignore them with uh, all of the health. And, of course, I'm using that chest mod that drops here, so that helps as well. And just going to rely on my ancient power to heal myself back up here. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And then what else do we have going? I think another really nice addition uh, could just be oil geysers, because remember the dragons, you know, are fire damage and all, as uh, you would expect they'd be. So getting some geysers out here for that uh, ignite combo is just a straight damage increase, so would be nothing at all wrong with that, that's for sure. In fact, I think that might actually even be better than going with proton beams. The geysers will provide a little bit of slow to any enemies that can be CC'd that aren't right around the wyverns, but additionally, they'll provide that damage bonus. And that's the real reason to use them, uh, without a doubt. All right, wave five incoming. So we, we're clearing them out. We're clearing them out here. 666 mobs. How evil. I think if we just get out here and contribute a little bit, we can burn through the packs really quick. They do come out a little bit slow. There's a lot of lanes. So with a lot of lanes, having a lot of mobs doesn't necessarily mean the map is going to run slow because there's lots of places for those mobs to come out. However, uh, sections of the, the enemy schedule do come out a little staggered. Making the map run a little bit on the slow side. Still definitely a map worth farming. Uh, once you get to the point where 
you know, you've grinded Ember Mount, you've got the weapons you want, um, it gets a little dull, you know, as with any map, really. Grinding the same map over and over again is just going to really kind of dull the experience a touch. But uh, this is a nice, nice one to grind. You get some uh, much needed crafting materials. You get those snake armor chips, of course. Oh, wrecked. That ogre still got pounded, though, even though he made it down to the middle. The assassins got me on that one, that's for sure. Another round here. That is the huge benefit of proton beams. Um, for 30 DU, just one proton beam, assassins become completely 100% trivial. So I know a lot of people like using tenacity to help them with the assassins. 30 DU and you just freed up one mod slot on every piece of armor. So I personally am not a big tenacity user for sure. Like I said, I know lots of folks use it successfully. But I would rather give up the 30 DU and keep that mod slot personally. If we can't drop a big nuke on Gribs there, we got him taken care of. Uh, where's that plaguing hawk? Looks like he's rolling out from over here. Didn't get the uh, boosted nuke on that one because of cooldowns. Oh, there we go. Not too shabby. So now just the boss is left. And of course, as long as they don't hit me, it will be all GG's. Even if they do hit me, I think the dragons will still kill them. But let's check it out. Maybe you'll get uh, a nice roll on uh, the snakeskin armor. Assuming it drops. It never drops when you want it, and it drops like crazy when you don't need it. I think that's uh, the general rule of RNG in most games. So we got the monk up here. Let him get busted up. He's a thick boy. Uh, over here, we should have the apprentice. The apprentice is uh, getting wrecked. That looks like the Huntress is just getting taken care of by the dragons. And then just the Squire is left, and he is very, very low health. And there we go. Now, oh, looks like I got the bug. There is a bug on this one. Uh, I haven't seen it in a long time. I thought it was fixed. But... There's a bug where if you kill all the bosses, I'm not really sure even exactly what triggers it. People used to say is if you kill them too quick, but I pretty clearly didn't kill them all too fast there. The map will bug out. It won't end. Now, you know, obviously that becomes like the world's greatest loot farm <laughs> if you're completely AFK. But yeah, this map is not going to end. So sadly, this is just another one of those bugs that exist in dd2 um super fun game but you know it has its uh engineering limitations no doubt about it so i guess that will do it for this episode thanks an absolute ton um i've got some things planned and some things upcoming here on the channel so not ready to announce things quite yet but i do have a few things in the work that i want to be working on that uh hopefully you all will enjoy so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.